Hello everyone, welcome to problem 3.23 of David Griffith's Electrodynamics. So, on today's problem, it says that a spherical shell of radius capital R carries a uniform charge, a uniform surface charge of sigma naught on the northern hemisphere and a uniform surface charge of negative sigma naught on the southern hemisphere. And it wants us to find the potential inside and outside of the sphere calculating the coefficients explicitly up to A6 and B6. All right, so that's the problem statement. <clears throat> so let's kind of kind of walk through the, the setup. So we have a spherical shell and the northern hemisphere, the northern half, has a uniform surface charge of sigma naught. The bottom half has a negative sigma naught surface charge. So we know you know, from Laplace's equation, the solution, we have two different cases. So if we're gonna find the potential inside the sphere, that's the case where R is less than or equal to the radius. And so the potential is given by the A sub L coefficient summation. And if we're finding the potential outside the sphere, that's the case where R is greater than or equal to R, the, the radius. And so that's the summation with the B sub L coefficients. And so these are the two cases, and it asks us to find inside and outside the sphere. So um, we're going to start with inside the sphere and then do outside. And don't forget that there's a relationship between the coefficients. So B sub L can be expressed as A sub L times the radius to the 2L plus 1 power. And so this is going to be handy so we don't have to go through the integration to do the calculations for B sub L. Now, a sub L is given by, there's a couple different ways to express these coefficients, A sub L. You could use, there's, there's expressions using the potential, if you know the potential on the surface. But in this case, we are given the surface charge density. So you can find in Griffith's textbook in chapter three, there's an expression for A sub L as a function of the surface charge density. So it is one over two epsilon naught times the radius to the L minus one power. Uh, times the integral uh, over theta from zero to pi of the surface charge density on the surface, the known surface charge density function, times the L Legendre polynomial times sine of theta d theta. So this is the expression we have for the coefficients. So really we have, um, for our case, we split uh, A sub L into two regions. So um, we're going to be integrating um, from theta is equal to, so theta is being measured from the z-axis, correct? Yes. So it's being measured from the z-axis. So from 0 to pi over 2 is the northern hemisphere, and then from um, pi over 2 to pi is the southern hemisphere. So the surface charge density function is going to change here inside the sphere. So we just split our integral up from zero to pi over two, and then from pi over two to pi, and we're replacing the surface charge density function on the first half uh, with the positive sigma naught, because we're in the region of the, the northern hemisphere, and then in this integral, we're in the region of the southern hemisphere, so we use a minus sigma naught. So we just have two integrals separated out here. So our goal here really is to, I mean, Really, you could go through and just plug in a sub one, two, three, four, five, six, and, and calculate these integrals explicitly. Um, there's nothing really stopping you from doing that here. Um, <clears throat> you can use a computer to do it. However, um, my goal was to get these two integrals um, into a single integral, um, possibly, and, and just make the expression easier. So if we do a u substitution for these integrals, um, and we let u be cosine of theta, then du is negative sine of theta d theta, and we can rewrite the top integral. So I first factor out all the common terms. So I factor out a sigma naught divided by two epsilon naught, uh, the radius to the L minus one power. So these are all common to both. Um, we have a negative sign um, on the, oh yeah, so, if you replace cosine and theta with u, right? So it'll be PL of u. Sine of theta d theta, well, 
du is negative sine of theta d theta. So sine of theta d theta is negative du. So I replace sine of theta d theta with negative th uh, du. So I get a negative on the outside du here. And then the bounds of the integration on the first integral become 1 because cosine of 0 is 1 and then the top is 0. So it goes from 1 to 0 on the first integral of just the Legendre polynomial is what we're integrating over. And then this has a plus sign. Um, I brought out the, the sigma naught. The negative was still here, but because du is negative sine theta d theta, then du, I just, that gets dragged into the du. So now this is a plus sign. So now the second integral bounds go from zero to negative one, uh, just plugging in these two bounds for cosine, and then same thing, integrating over a piece of L of u du. Uh, really, u is just a dummy variable at this point, so you could use x or whatever, like, it's just a dummy variable. So, so that's our first step in trying to get these integrals to be one integral. Um, then I use this negative sign to flip the bounds on the first integral, and um, I then also bring out a negative sign on this one to flip the bounds on this integral. So really all I did in this step was flip the bounds on the two integrals. I didn't really close off the bracket there, but there we go. So now the integral goes from zero to one, and then this one goes from negative one to zero. All right, so there, we, we're, we use a relationship uh, of like even and odd functions here. So the Legendre polynomials, um, the, the even L terms, the, e, the even L polynomials are even functions, and the odd L polynomials are odd functions. If you don't know what an even and odd function is, um, just you know, look it up, I can kind of explain it. But there's a relationship that if you, um, essentially, piece of L of negative X is equal to negative one to the L power of piece of L of X. And this is because if, if, if a function is even, then F of negative X is equal to F of X. If a function is odd, F of negative X is equal to negative F of X. So because the Legendre polynomials alternate even and odd functions every, you know, every term, every polynomial, because this goes even odd, even odd, then, oops, sorry about that, guys. <clears throat> then, you know, this expression, when you plug in piece of L of negative X, we have a negative one to the Lth power, so that on even powers, this is a positive, and we get the positive, the even relationship, and when this is odd, we get a negative one out here, and we get the odd relationship. So this is just kind of an expression of even, even and odd functions for the Legendre polynomials. And we can use this. So if we take a look at, um, I believe, yes. Yeah, so if we take a look at this integral, the second integral here, so I've rewritten it down here, then we're integrating from the region negative one to zero of uh, piece of L of u, right? Well, this can be thought of as equivalent to integrating uh, from one to zero or the opposite side of the, you know, the opposite region, the same amount of space, but the opposite side, but it's equivalent to plugging in negative u uh, as the parameter. And this can kind of just be, um, I mean, it's, you kind of just have to graph this one out. Like I kind of had to do it over here to kind of make it make sense in my head, right? So if we just think of like, I don't know, let's say we're thinking about a quadratic, you know, x squared, right? Uh, um, so if it's an even, if it's one of the even Legendre polynomials, I don't know, x squared isn't, but, um, you know, we're integrating from negative one, so let's say this is negative one, this is one, you know, you're integrating this region, um, so, and you're plugging in x, so, um, you're plugging in these values, like, you know, uh, sorry, you're going from negative one to one, so um, you're plugging in these values, um, and you get this area, right? 
and the even function has the same kind of shape on the other side. So if you go from here to here, if you're doing the same like region on the other side, um, but you're just plugging in. So essentially, if you plug in um, negative, if it's an even function, if you plug in negative, you just get the same thing, right? So it, it, you kind of just have to reason this out in your head. If you plug in, for, if, if, if it's an even Lazard polynomial, you plug in negative, then you just get the function back. That's what the even. That's what an even function is, and so you get the same area uh, by doing this. And if it was an odd function, um, you essentially, I don't know, like x cubed is an example of one. Uh, <clears throat> but I kind of just had to like think about this. So let me kind of just like think about this. So if it's an odd function and you integrate. Like if you're integrating from on this region and plugging in um, just your x values, but then over here if you're integrating this region where you're plugging in the negative x values, but you get the uh, when you plug in if it's odd when you plug in the negative x values you get the negative version. So really you get the same region over here actually. So I mean it does work. I, Really, if you're gonna, if you're confused by this relationship, I would just like choose a simple function and graph it to kind of like justify it in your head, like x squared or something and x cubed. Um, but this relation does hold. So, using this relationship, um, we can rewrite this integral as this integral, right? Um, but then using this relationship above, we can rewrite p sub l of negative u or negative x as negative one to the l um, times, you know, the, and then we just replace it with the l polynomial with just regular u, not negative u. Um, and then let me see here. So here I moved that up and then I flipped the bounds. So now it goes from zero to one instead of from one to zero. So there's an extra minus sign out here. So I flip the bounds. And essentially we're gonna use this form of the integral because now the bounds match the bounds of the first integral and the, the arguments are the same. So then we can combine them into a single integral. So we can rewrite the coefficient a sub l as you know what we had before this stuff sigma divided by two epsilon naught r to the l minus one. And then I just rewrote this out here. So we have these two integrals that are the same bounds, same arguments, and then I have this negative and a negative one to the lth power. So then in the next line, I have those constants again. I factor out the, inter I factor out the integral and we're left with one minus negative one to the lth power. So if you think about this expression, if L is even, then this is a positive one. You get one minus one, which is zero. So all of the even coefficients, even a sub L's are zero. And then if this is odd, you get one minus negative one, which is two. So you just get the two to cancel on the bottom here. And you have this expression, this integral expression for odd L. So given this, we've now eliminated like a lot of terms that we have to calculate. So a zero, a two, a four, and a six, because we're supposed to go up to the sixth uh, coefficient, we know that all four of those are zero. And then by this relationship, if all those are zero, then all the b's as well are zero. So b zero, b two, b four, and b six are zero. And we just need to find the odd terms. So we need to find a one, a three, a five, b1, b3, and b5 um, using this expression. So let me flip this over and there you go. So I just rewrote the integral expression that we're gonna to use to find all the coefficients. So in sigma over epsilon naught, radius to the L minus one power times the integral of u from zero to one of the L to the polynomial with, re with respect to u. So plugging in one, we get sigma naught over epsilon naught, integral of u to u, 
And this is a simple enough integral. You get u squared over two, plug in the bounds, and you get one half uh, times sigma, sigma over epsilon naught. So that is A1. Then using this expression, uh, B1 is equal to A1 times R squared plus one. So that is just uh, sigma R cubed over two because of the one half epsilon naught. So B1 is just this and A1 is this. Now we plug in three into this expression. So we get sigma over epsilon naught uh, R squared on the bottom. Then we're plugging in the third Legendre polynomial. So just, I had to look that up. I factored out the one half from it <clears throat> and we're integrating five U cubed minus three U du. So this is just a simple polynomial integral. So we have sigma divided by two epsilon naught R squared. And then the integral is five fourths U to the fourth minus three halves U to the U squared uh, evaluated uh, from zero to one. So plugging in uh, those bounds, you get sigma over two epsilon naught R squared times five fourths minus three halves, which if you just do the fraction stuff is negative one eighth. So what you get is negative sigma naught over eight. Uh, well, you know, it's really, this is I think negative a fourth or yeah, and then times the two makes it an eight. So negative sigma over eight epsilon naught R squared. So that is A3. Then B3 is just A3 times R to the two times three plus one. Um, so this is gonna be, what, six, seven. So it's A3 times R to the seventh. And then, so it cancels two of the R's on the bottom. You get sigma R to the fifth, uh, negative sigma R to the fifth over eight epsilon naught. So that is the B3 coefficient. And lastly, we have A5 and B5. So we have sigma over epsilon naught r to the fourth power. And then looking at the fifth Legendre polynomial, you can factor out a one eighth. And then the integral is 63u to the fifth minus 70u cubed plus 15u with respect to u. And so just doing that integration, what you get is sigma over eight epsilon naught r to the fourth then you get 63 over 6 u to the 6 minus 70 fourths u to the 4th plus 15 halves u squared. And then we evaluate those bounds from 0 to 1. So we have the, co we have the constants and then uh, just getting a common denominator, you get 126 over 12 minus 210 over, tw uh, over 12 plus 90 over 12. And that comes down to, once you do all the multiplication, you get uh, 1 16th. So, it's sigma, the final coefficient is sigma over 16 epsilon naught r to the fourth power. And then just using this expression, b5 is a5 times r to the 11th power. So we just have sigma r to the seventh because four of the r's are canceled from here. And then over 16 epsilon naught. And that is all the coefficients. So um, I didn't write out the, the full potential here, but all you're going to do is you know, you go back to these two expressions that you you have here, and now we know the first six terms for both of these summations, so you can just fill it in yourself using those six terms. So really that's it. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments below. Um, and I appreciate you guys watching, so thank you guys very much. Um, I do wanna say that I just now got my YouTube channel monetized. So, um, you know, thank you guys for, you know, always watching my videos and, and leaving great comments and questions and uh, just all for the support and everything. Cause you know, <clears throat> I've been working on this for a while. I don't always have a lot of time, but I try to do this when I can, uh, just because I really enjoy it and it keeps my brain going. Um, so it keeps me thinking and, and learning. So thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. So. I will, I will see you guys on the next video.